let the Holy Spirit speak, and then and then just kind of do what He wanted to do. Um, there was an area that I've been I've been thinking about, and so I, I started down that, and about halfway through it, um, I, I another word came to my heart, and I wrote it down, and um, about as I started thinking and writing down scriptures for that word, another word came to my mind. And I was like, okay, Lord, what do these three things have in common? And, uh, and he, he led me to um, 2 Timothy chapter 3. So go ahead and go there. John, I'm going to read this portion of the uh, message uh, of the sermon out of, out of the New American Standard Bible. Um, <clears throat> I could have picked any one of them. King James Version, just to, you know, I like how some of the things are, are worded in this passage. Um, <clears throat> but uh, but NA, NASB seems to be hipping and hopping, and uh, Pastor Lisa likes it, so we just, we just make her happy. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and just read this. And, and again, this got me into the three areas that the Holy Spirit had it just dropped in my spirit in studying. And, uh, and and you'll know you'll understand as I get going on this. Again, again, I believe this is a timely message. Uh, I, I believe there's I, I believe the Word of God is, has got universal truths that are uh, that are timeless. Um, but sometimes we are in, in, in need. I think Sunday morning was one of those that we were just in need of at that time, at that moment. That's that's why this one is also, um, and because God does. God, God, God is God has His own timing. Uh-huh. Uh huh. His His time isn't like our time. How many How many feel like uh, if you were God, you would have showed up on November second, and and uh, you know done some things so that November third would have gone smoother. Uh, but again, we understand if you've been listening to the prophets and listen, listen to lots going on. What's gone on had to go on because God was revealing things to people. So because of that, we just got to let him be God and, and, and sit back and watch the show. I remember when I preached that a couple months ago, I guess it was. God likes a show, and, and uh, so, so we're just going to enjoy the show. But in that same way where, th- where truths are universal and go at any time, again, there's, there's that time. That's what this sermon is tonight. Uh, let, let's let's read and, and I'll, I'll, I'll we'll, get, we'll get going. Second uh, Timothy chapter three. We're going to start in verse one. It says, "But realize this: that in the last days, difficult times will come." Uh, the King James version says it like this: "Perilous times." Um, I like the Amplified version where he says, "But understand this: that in the last di- days, uh, that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble." Hard to deal with and hard to bear, and and again that kind of sounds pretty uh, scary, doesn't it? It's kind of like I don't want those kind of times. Uh, I want to go back to the uh, you know back in the early days of where things were easy and and everybody you know you went and you brought Kool Aid to your neighbor and you and you did this and that and you could you didn't have to wear masks and all that kind of stuff. I, I want to go back to that. I don't want this time. Well, A, nothing's keeping you from taking Kool-Aid to your neighbor. Nothing's, no, nothing's stopping you from taking cookies to your neighbor. Amen. Nothing's stopping you from loving on people and changing the world around you. Selah, right? Why doesn't anybody do that anymore? Do you do that anymore? All right, Selah, Pastor Thad, move on to something more exciting. Okay. So, so at first glance, this looks like it's kind of intimidating because, again, how many would think that, uh, that we've entered at least into a season of some perilous times? Some stuff going on that is not quite right, not quite functioning the way we thought things should function. But as we look here, we'll notice that it's not that way for just everybody. Uh, let's go on, verse 2. For men... So this is talking about the group group of men, and 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 again, my 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 understanding of this is that the men where the perilous times are going to come on. Listen, we know, serving Christ, that there that there are some uh, battles. There are some things that come with serving Christ. 
We understand, he tells us, to endure the hardship like a soldier would do. All right? We understand that. But his word declares that he takes, he takes pleasure in prospering us. That, he's, that he wants us to be uh, happy and, and fortunate and to be envied by those around us. And, and so, just because a time period comes around where he says it's going to be perilous times, it doesn't do away with those promises that he's made to his children. Amen. And so right here at the top, he said, there's going to be times of perilous times where, in other words, I'm trying to think here where it's at um, in Scripture. I, I, I can just pull it out. It's in Psalms where he says, um, oh, Psalm 91, for only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. Right? Only with your eyes will you see it. So in other words, they will have perilous times. You won't. Because you'll be safe on all sides. And things will go right for you that didn't go right for them. So, so when he says here, for men, this is the reason perilous times are going to come around. Men, and again, that's not just man. Man is talking about mankind. So again, this does not leave women out. <laughs> I know we're going to pick on women here in a second in this scripture. Um, but uh, but I, again, I don't think that one leaves men out. Uh, so, so mankind will end up being lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Remember, the love of money is the root of all evil. When, you're, when you are making deals with the Chinese government... To make sure your family is set, um, you have you have enter, you've opened yourself up to a lot of stuff that all right men this men this, this you can turn on don't turn it on but uh, turn on the news and this is you'll see it, this is describing the news lovers of yourself lovers of money boastful. Arrogant, Whew. revilers, disobedient to parents. That was probably the starting point, but that's, that's again, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips. Ooh, just throwing stuff out there that, that has got no truth at all. Without self-control, brutal, haters of good. <laughs> treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now all those things, again, these you want to find out who perilous times are coming on. It's not coming on the righteous. And I'm, we're, we're going to see this here a little, a little bit more. It's not, it's not about just coming on the righteous, but it's coming... But it's coming to people because of this stuff going on. I, I don't ever think for a second that we should sit here and, and, and try to focus on like these negative things. But every now and then we need to read through and say, hey, is, is any of this describing myself? Because if it is, then I'm introducing, I'm making myself available to perilous times. But verse 5 is one that really got my attention today. Because it says, holding a form of godliness... Although they deny the power. Now again, this is another definition, but it's people that look and want to want to uh, you know say that they're they're Christians, that they're godly, that 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 you know the reason we're doing this, this is how God God would want this to have happen. That God God is not happy with this. God is not, and and, and they don't they don't know Him, and and the reason you don't know Him is there's no power. And he, what does he tell us to do with those men? King James says, "Of such turn away." Here it says, "Avoid these men. Don't, don't, don't pay attention to them. Don't let their words into your hearing. Don't let their viewpoints. Don't let their thoughts. Don't let their ideas come even nigh your ears. Don't let the drums in your ears be ratted, tatted by their voices." 
Because again, all that's going to do is good, it's creating in you a mindset of what they're of what they're accepting. These people are not us. Difficult times are not us, but the people who fit in these categories. I want us to understand that. So we've got to guard ourselves. Which again, I believe one of the most powerful things is, is, is creating in ourselves an atmosphere for the power of God to work. Creating in ourselves an expectation for the power of God to work. I, I, I just, I've entitled this message, for lack of a better title, Don't Deny the Power, Expect the Power. Don't walk around thinking that somehow this world has, has a say in your life or that, that what's going on around you is, is, is the end all, is the final. We, we talked a little bit on Sunday about a, uh, about a prophet that's a national prophet. And I, I haven't listened to a whole lot more regarding him because, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't need it. I don't, I don't need anything that's it's denying the power. But he, he spoke very clearly and hard that, that Trump was going to be in the White House another four years. And then on January 6th or 7th, I think it was the 7th, first thing in the morning, he delivered an apology that he was wrong. Well, where, where, where's his expectation for the power? Was your expectation in, in Congress, in the Senate? Was your expectation in this? Listen, my expectation is in the power of God. And when, it, when it's anything else, when, it's, when your expectation is anything else except for the power of God, then, beloved, you have set yourself up for perilous times. All right. Verse 6. Because these are just, I, I wanted to just go through 5, and then I kept reading, and I thought, I'm going to at least go through verse 9 here. It says, for among them are those who enter into households and captivate weak women, weighed down with sins, led on by various impulses, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, now again, this is not picking on women. In that, in that time period, in that society, women were the least educated. And so it would, it would become easy for them to get fooled in the household. They, they, they weren't the ones that would ne- normally go to uh, the synagogue, or they wouldn't normally go to, to places of gathering. They would be in the house. And, and so it was easy, because of their situation, to be easily fooled by anything that came into their ears. And, um, and so, again, I'm not picking on women. You know, I... I I, I, my, my success as a pastor um, hinges on women, uh, praying women, preaching women, singing women. Amen. So, so this is not any kind of attack on women. Am I good on that one? You guys understand that, right? This is just simply identifying. In the same way that verse 2 isn't about only men, this is not only about women. It's, it's about people who think they're smart and aren't. They think that they're getting information, but they're getting it from fake news. They're really easy to fool because, again, well, didn't President Trump tell everybody to storm the castle? Absolutely he did not. There were, somewhere in the vicinity, we'll, just, we'll pick a number, of 500,000 people listening to a speech right down there, downtown Washington, D.C., and what, 50 people decided to storm the Capitol? So apparently, uh, see, that would even be a majority that Dominion voting systems couldn't change. Apparently, a majority of the people that were there understood he didn't tell them to do that. But because 50 of them did, we're going we're gonna to start spewing lies into your ears and get, a, and get people to go, oh, President Trump's totally lost it. He didn't, no. It's just that people think they're smart, but, but all they are are really easy and simple to deceive. And that's what he's saying here. 
He's saying when, you're, when, you hear, when you let these people, these men, these women who are, who are selfish and, and, and ego-driven ego and, and, are, and are acting like they're godly. Whew. I got friends that I grew up with. I got friends I didn't grow up with. They just, you know, through my life. And they, they act so spiritual. And, and yet, yet they're, they're stuck being, having their eardrums tickled. It's deception. They're easy to fool. But notice this in verse 8. And this is, I had to get here because the Lord's been telling me this for several years. And I don't think it's just me because it's right here. <laughs> but it says, just as Janies and Jamborees opposed Moses, so these men also opposed the truth. So again, this is still talking about these men. These men, these women, the, these people that are deceptive, these people that are getting deceived easily, they also oppose the truth. Men of depraved minds rejected in regard to the faith, but they will not make... You ready for this? Say, say Pastor that I'm ready. All right, all right, all right. They will not make further progress. Say that with me. Say they will not make further progress. They will not make further progress. See, here's what I'm saying. Is that they are full of that. There's going to be perilous times all around. But they, there's a line drawn just like Moses when he threw down his uh, number seven. I think it is. Don't turn there. Number seven talks about where Pharaoh trusted these men. And, 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 uh, and uh, Moses threw his rod down. And 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 again, remember that was that was uh, that his, his word, and, and it was and it was threw it down, and it started. It came to life as a snake, and so the men were like, "All right, we're we're uh, we've got this mystic ability." So they threw their rods down, and they became snakes. And then, and then what did Moses' snake do? Gobbled it up. Now, if you think about it, he went down there. He picked it up by the tail, right? Picked it up again, and it became the rod again. And it in and, and it didn't. It wasn't just. It wasn't just his anymore. Those two that were the d denying the power, those two that were arrogant, those two that were doing their things, was now given every authority they had was now given to him. Think about that. That's what that rod represented was their authority. That was their scepter, and now it was in his. In other words, I'm not saying that he, that he had their powers. I'm simply saying he had now their authority. So grab this. All right, well, let, let, me, let me make sure I, I finish that. They will not make further progress for their folly, which is what's happening right now across America, will be obvious to all. That's why, G, that's why God waited two months uh, for all this stuff to show. Just as in Jambri, Jam, Jannies and Jamboree's folly was also. So my point here is, is any kind of authority that those two men had because of their magical wands and their magical stuff, they lost. And it was turned over into the hands of the just. And I'm telling you, what, what time period is this talking about? In the last days, when perilous times come. There is no need to fret the men that are selfish, the women that are selfish, the women that are being fooled easily, the men that are being fooled easy. Because the very authority that any of them have is going to be turned over to the just. And the Holy Spirit has declared that this is a decade that's going to be different. And I know it started different, but the, but the reason it started different is because there's a purging that has happened. The swamp that we've been hearing about is about ready to get cleaned out. I heard one person say it like this, one prophet say it like this. The Holy Spirit told him uh, that the swamp, swamp would be cleared, drained cleared, on the 19th, I think, of January, 2021. That wasn't the, it wouldn't have been my idea. I'd have fried them all early. But think about it where, where it says in, uh, I, if you saw me looking up a scripture during worship, um, in Psalm 30 where it says, um, his anger is for a moment, but his favor is for life. 
And, and, and I, I think that it's very important that we understand that God's not out there trying to fry people. He's out there trying to, re, it's not his desire that any should perish, but all come to repentance. So he wants them to turn. And he gave them a lot of time. But, he's, but, but, but the guy said that, that in order to get the creatures out of the swamp, it's a process of getting, of getting the swamp water out. And once the swamp water's out, everything will be revealed and it becomes real easy to pick them off. And he said that's what's currently happening, is that there's, it, things are becoming really obvious because the swamp water's going down and there's revealing and it's going to happen. All right. So now here, here, here's, here's where the Holy Spirit had me. And I'm not going to take a lot of time on this tonight. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a Wednesday night. So I do want to go at least somewhat r- rapidly. Um, but, uh, but this is what the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. Because the reason I started on this whole thing were, were, were the, the three areas that the Lord gave to me. He showed me it was due to the fact that um, now, now I know several of us here are on social media. There's a couple of you that are not, and you're probably better off for it. I use social media just really for friends and to show off my kids and stuff like that, but it's really turned into, on many areas, almost a cesspool uh, sent, uh, in the last uh, four years. Um, but, but one of the things that social media has done is it makes it apparent and clear that this passage is absolutely true and it's happening in front of our eyes. Um, Looking at social media, I noticed that godly people and the heathen, there's not a lot of difference. Now, I'm not picking on us. I, 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 again, I, I'm, I, it tickles me pink that, that 99.9% of anything that anybody posts here, and again, I, I only reason that I leave point one out is because there may have been something, but 99.9% of anything that is our body of believers post is, is, is edifying um, or just our kids or is, or is just edifying is helping other people out which is what we we're, we're supposed to be doing so i'm not picking on anybody here but we all know christian friends who are busy p- talking about how doom and gloom everything is i i've got i've got a friend of mine who um who posted you better get ready because the it's going to be the hardest times um you know you need to learn to do all these little things that are uh, that that are uh you know, little skills because it's going to be hard and you're going to have to, and you know, he's a prepper is what he is. So you're going to have to go away to the backwoods and hide and, and, and all your freedom is going to be taken away. <laughs> he ain't reading the same Bible I'm reading. And, but, but again, but, but see, there's Christians that I know that are faith Christians that are still talking about what, how our government is, is, you know, free speech is gone, and this is gone, and that is gone, and everything is bad. And I'm like, listen, according to Scripture, I'm supposed to turn away from you. I'm not supposed to sit here and allow your, your, your words of doubt and unbelief to enter into my ears. You want to sit there and tell me how bad everything is going to get? I want to sit here and tell you how much my God is bigger than the, than the crooks that are working their way in this system. God told us on Sunday morning, God told me several weeks ago, He said, I have, I have not forgotten about America. I still made a, I made a covenant with your forefathers and I have not forgot it. And I've been waiting for some people to call on that covenant. And beloved, that is one thing that's happened over this last uh, couple months, is godly people have been calling on that covenant with Almighty God. And something big's about ready to happen. But we got to quit doing what the world's doing. And the Holy Spirit, when, 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 he, when He showed me this, He said, He says there's a couple things that even... The, the, the righteous, the faith Christians have allowed slip over the last two, two months. And we've got we've, we've to get back on top of these three things. Now the first thing he told me, and this is where I started, and again, I, I've, already sh- I've already shared this with you, but he said, you have got to get con- 
you as the body of Christ have got to get control of the words of your mouth. It's one of the things I keep hearing from the prophets. Hank Kuhneman, uh, Mario Morella, um, Kat, Kerr. They're all saying, um, quit arguing with the prophets and get your mouth lined up with what the Word of God is saying. What, what, what God is saying. If God's saying it, you keep talking about it. Keep talking about the next four years. Quit, quit arguing it. Quit trying to say, ah, oh, no, uh, socialist is, socialism is going to get America now. Quit it. <clears throat> you are giving away America for the cost of a word. If we don't stand up and declare the right... But Pastor Thad, listen, I've learned curse words that are coming out of other people's mouths. I curse those words that, that America is going to hell in a handbasket. Anytime I read that, I, I curse that in Jesus' name. And I declare under a covenant with Almighty God that this nation is blessed. And the best days of this nation are not just what's behind us. That revival is hitting this nation. And this nation still has a purpose to reach in the world. But you've got to watch the words of your mouth. Things are horrible, Pastor Thad. Things are going to become so tough. People are bad. Our government's, government's bad. Beloved, we know better than saying that stuff. And yet we keep posting it. Not necessarily us. I'm talking about the church. Don't let ourselves post this stuff. Matthew 12. We're going to go back to King James Version. My temptation in when I started putting this stuff on paper was to operate as a teacher and to give scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. And, uh, and the Holy Spirit said, no, I just want to, I want you, your people know this. How many of here know that you need to watch the words of your mouth? Yeah, we know that. That doesn't surprise us. It's not shocking to us. We just need to be refreshed that, that even the words that we type are words that are coming out, that, that, are, that are being declared. It's the words that are inside of us. And, and, and we've got we to stop, we've got to guard that. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. No, I believe God's a powerful God. Then, then why do you think that a group of people can cheat and still stand when God had a plan? I mean, maybe this message will get kicked off of YouTube. I don't know. Do you, you, do you think their cheating is stronger than your God? Then quit talking. Then, then, then don't let that come out your mouth. Don't let that come on your social post. Don't let that come to the person that you're standing there talking with in the, in the grocery store. Oh, but it's easier just to, just to agree with them and go on, or it's easier just to, to say instead of finding it. Listen, it's easier for me to live free. And, and, and go ahead and let some people hate me than to live under bondage. Amen. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings out good things. An evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word, useless word, empty word that men shall speak, they will give an account of in the day of judgment. And again, remember, that's, that, that judgment doesn't mean when you get up into heaven that, they're, that God's going to be... That word judgment is crisis. So in the day where, where, where things start getting, perilous times start happening, if you haven't lined up your life with the right words, you're going to give an account of it. Amen? For with your words you'll be justified, with your words you'll be condemned. If we want to have more than just the form of godliness, we must declare it with our mouths and we quit declaring what a mess everything is. Call those things that are not as though they already were. We know this. 
But the enemy is trying to get the church to be complacent and lazy and fall for it and, 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 and just start spewing out, oh, it's horrible. Things are going to get terrible. It's going to be a horrible four years. All right. Now for me. Let me say this. I told you back on November 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 7th, I think it was this was Sunday after that. Maybe it was, no, yeah, it may have been the Wednesday. But I said, any other election year, this is what my message would be. <laughs> is that your vote for God's candidate is your seed for, for prospering the next four years. And so I was thinking about that the other day, and I thought, you know what? Even if I weren't going to believe the prophets, even if I was set and thought somehow that man's system is greater than God's system, even if that was the case, I know where I placed my I vote, and, 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 and my four years are still going to be blessed years. But God said something different. So who am I? To disagree. Amen? So beloved, watch the words of your mouth. Don't let the, the, the idle, futile words about, about America come out your mouth. Amen? Alright, so that's what he first started. He started me talking about, talking about the words of our mouth. And I kept seeing that. And, and, and then right in the middle of talking about it. And he said, and beloved, and, and, and don't, don't forget to expect my favor daily in your life. So that's number two. Expect the favor of God. Again, the Bible wasn't written and there wasn't this little prefix, suffix, footnote, footnote, footnote. That's the word I'm looking for. There wasn't this little footnote that said, this will work except for in perilous times. When he, when he said, um, when he said, when he talked about favor, Psalm chapter 5, verse 11. For I will... Um, well, let's just pop it up there real quick. Let those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Um, verse 12. I just totally put the wrong one down there. Verse 12. For thou, O Lord, will bless the righteous, and with favor you will encompass them about on all sides as with a shield. Can't touch this. A thousand may fall on my side, ten thousand my right hands, but there's a shield of favor that surrounds me, and things work for me that don't work for everybody else. <clears throat> so, quit being a Debbie Downer. Quit expecting the negative. God has different things planned for His kids <clears throat> and different things planned for those that operate in faith. Go over to Numbers chapter 6. <coughs> yeah, hallelujah. I just, it was just weird, because again, every message I preach, God gives it to me a little bit different, you know, give it just a different way. But when he said, the words of your mouth, I understood that. I was going on that. I was like excited about that. And then all of a sudden he stopped me right in the middle and said, and, and, and tell them to ex keep expecting my favor. Wake up every morning of your life with an expectation of the favor of God in your life. It's going to happen today. Things are going to happen for me today that don't happen for everybody else. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24, you might find this somewhat <laughs> familiar. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you peace. That's one of the reasons I sang that song, because I wanted that in our heart. I wanted that operating in us. But that word gracious, the, in, the, in the Amplified Version, it says, The Lord make His face to shine upon you, enlighten you, and be gracious, kind, merciful, and giving favor to you. That is a blessing that God spoke on His children back in 
it, while they're wandering in the wilderness, tired, frustrated, full of anxiety, wandering. We're supposed to be in our place. Then he says that, and 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 they keep slipping over. They keep slipping over into complaining. And God said, "You don't understand. I have placed a blessing upon you, a blessing of peace, a blessing of favor, a bless a blessing of nothing missing, nothing broken. I have placed that upon you, and there is nothing that shall by any means hurt you." Expect it to come to pass every day of your life. Romans chapter four is another part that just came up to my in my heart because in nineteen and through twenty one, you know, he, he says when he was about a hundred years old, um, he didn't consider his own body, even though it was way past that time, right? And he, and he and he, but he said he was he was staggered not through unbelief and was fully persuaded. He was just couldn't be changed in his mind. But, but notice verse 18. Romans 4, verse 18. Notice what it says. It says, who against expectation. There was no reason why he should have been expecting anything. And against that. Y'all don't, y'all, y'all don't get your hopes up. How can this thing work? I've, I've said that so many times to God. I said, God, I don't have to understand details. I just, need to, um, I just need to trust what the prophets have said, trust what you have said, and I'll, and, and, and I'll prosper. I don't have to know the details. So one prophet today said, it's the first time I've heard this one. He, he, I don't even, I'm not, not, not sure who he is. I, I, but, but he said that the Lord told him, said, uh, said, be ready for two inaugura- inaugurations. I didn't listen to the whole thing. I just saw it on the kind of head there. Uh, get ready for two. I don't know. But I don't, it, again, I'm not, I don't have to figure it out. It's, it's his word. But it says, who against hope, when there, shouldn't have, when there should have been no expectation. That's what the word hope means. Ernest explain. When there should have been no expectation, he still believed. How is it worded here? Um, he believed in that expect with expectation. He, he shouldn't have, but he did. He woke up every morning believing that his seed was going to come forth, that it was going to happen. Every morning. Beloved, that's what we need to do every morning. Don't again, if there's something you need to do, if you need to write it on a piece of paper, if you need to, if you need to stick it in your wallet, in your purse, or something that, that, that every day when you look at it, you'll remember the favor. Don't forget the favor of God. But beloved, the reason the favor doesn't happen to people is because they don't expect it. And again, how do you know you expect it? The words of your mouth. So expect the favor of God. To work for you every day. Say every day. Past that, I think that's kind of naive, isn't it? Every day. Now, that's the way my God is. He's an everyday kind of God. Number three. I'm saying, I'm, 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 by that time, I realized the words of your mouth. Expect the favor of God. And, and, and before I could put my put, pen, pen down, I wrote right down there. Fill your life. With praise and worship. See, the problem becomes... Now again, I, I, I'm going to cover one little quick thing at the clo- conclusion of this. Um, the problem becomes is that we keep hearing how big government is and how big uh, everybody uh, that's going on is. We keep hearing that. Scripture, scripture says, O oh, come magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. Let's keep singing about His goodness. Keep singing about how great He is. How mighty He is. Keep singing about His blessing. Keep singing about he takes, how He takes dead things and brings them to life. Keep singing about, uh, about His blood. Keep singing about His mercy. Keep singing about His favor. Keep singing about His goodness. Keep singing about how faithful He is. Great is Thy faithfulness! Keep singing. 
Keep declaring. Keep magnifying, making Him bigger by continuing to worship Him in the middle of everything. Way too many Christians post way too many bad news things or news things on their social media site when we need to be filling it up more with the praises of God. Let me tell you now about a God I serve. He's bigger than the problem. He's bigger than the nerd. I couldn't think of anything else that rhymed with serve. But we just begin praising Him and lifting Him up, magnifying His name. Quit magnifying fake news, lying liberals, everything that's off. Start magnifying the size of your God. Psalm 34 says, praise Him continually. Psalm 98 and Psalm 150 says, praise Him loud. Uh, uh, 2 Chronicles 20 says, praise Him even when things aren't going your way. And again, the, one of the things that got me on this thing was, was something I wrote down for my sermon on, Mon, on Sunday, this last Sunday. And it was the only thing I didn't put on my notes. I always hate that when I write something really good down and it doesn't fit. I'm not supposed to put it in that message. But I saved the piece of paper. And I looked over at it. And all I said did was write down when when there's a king in the camp, something's different. Remember in Numbers where Balaam looked down and he was, Balak, uh, Balak was trying to get him to curse Israel? And he said, I can't curse what God's blessed. And one of the things he noted about a blessed people is there's a shout of the king in the camp. There is a shout of a king among them. So if you need the address to that, it's Numbers 23, 21. He said, man, I can't mess with these people because there's a shout of the king that's among them. They are blessed and the king's in the press. The king is there, therefore there is instinct, the, the, there's the word, instinctual praise. I started thinking because Ryan's got me kind of hooked a little bit on some of the medieval type TV shows and Movies. I don't like it normally, but uh, I don't know. He does, and he's got just this creative mind, and so he got me watching some of it. And um, and and I noticed that anytime you watch a king come into the presence of just people, there was there's an instinctual uh, response, and it's and it's a response of praise. They'll they'll fall on their face and bow before them. They'll they'll, they'll bow they'll bow in reverence or or they'll or they'll shout. They'll rejoice. I heard one story of a of Bernard Johnson. He was a was a missionary in Brazil, and he said he said that he remembers one of the first times he went down to Brazil. They were showing him through the city, and and they walked down to this main area of the city, and there was just a there was just hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people in this area just packed in. And he said, what's going on here? And they said, oh, the king is going to, be, is going to uh, make a proclamation today. He said, oh, really? So he decided to stay there. And they said, yeah, he'll come out and he'll stand right on that balcony. He said, well, that's interesting. And, and, uh, <clears throat> and a, few, a few minutes later, all of a sudden, the, the doors of the, the, the uh, balcony opened up and this man stepped up. And just a man, but it was the king. And he said, as soon as that king went, the people just went crazy and began rejoicing that the king was now in their presence. And I've never forgotten that example because, again, if it's a bad king, you do it for fear. But when you know it's a king that has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness and a king that is loading you with his benefits and a king who's got you, has got you watched over and, and has got you protected on every side, when you know it's that kind of king, your praise isn't out of fear. It's out of adoration and out of love and out of fact that uh, that's my king. That's, that's who's got control of my life. 
I don't care what California elected in, Illinois elected in. I don't care when necessary. Well, I do care what Kentucky elected in. But what I care about is who my king is. Because who my king is, that's all that matters. And so in the midst of all this chaos, I'm going to keep worshiping and magnifying the king of kings and lord of lords over my life. And the bigger he gets in me, the more he affects everything around me. So, perilous times, what's going to be? Are you going to be affected by the selfish people? The lies? The foolishness? And again, I I love that phrase there in verse 9. They will not make further progress. Are you going to be the one that's going to actually step in power and make progress during a perilous time? Watch the words of your mouth. Expect favor. Expect it. Beloved, tomorrow morning, let the first thing that comes out of your mouth be I fully anticipate the favor of God to work for me today. And then begin thanking Him for it. Praising Him for it. Thank You for Your bigness. Thank You for Your goodness, Lord. And of course, we understand the reason a lot of people have gotten caught up in all this stuff And the opposite is because they've let two things go. First of all, they become more taken back by listening to news instead of listening and reading the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So don't, I'm telling you what, if you, if you read a half hour of news stories, you better be reading at least a half hour, if not more, of the Word of God. Listen to sermons to build your faith. Number two is speak in tongues more. I think, we've, I think the church, even the Pentecostal church, they've let it go. They, they, they've missed it. They keep, they keep talking about everything they know to talk about. Sometimes... It's best just to talk about the mysteries of God. How do we talk about the mysteries of God? By using our heavenly language. Don't let there be a day that you don't speak in tongues. Don't, only, don't, don't save it for Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights when we come together and we worship. And you just kind of, during your praise and worship, some you'll, you'll let that flow out. Let it be a daily thing where you are using your heavenly language and praying in that heavenly language. And when you don't know exactly what to, to pray... Just use your heavenly language because you're praying perfectly. Ask for interpretation because he'll let you know what you're praying. And it'll change your mindset. But if, but if you will focus on those two things, you will wake up with a greater expectation. Beloved, I, I, I believe that, that, that a, a Christian should, how can I word this? That, that, that speaking in tongues should become a nature to a Christian. In other words, it's not something that you purpose yourself to do. Oh, I need to speak in tongues now. But when you wake up in the morning, you're not, you maybe aren't even thinking about it, but you hear yourself, and it just, and it's just there instinctual because that means that you are in deeper communication with God than you you were before. You're more in tune with his mindset than you were before. Amen. All right, let's stand together. I, I hope I said everything that I clear. It's really easy to get off and start thinking that um, everything is off and that everything in the world is off and it looks off. But it can be off for a thousand by our side, ten thousand in our right hand. It doesn't have to be off for me. Not for off for us. Yes, sir. We've got to spend our time praising, expecting, and speaking 
and God will take care of the rest. We don't have to figure out how. That's not our job. Our job is to speak it, to expect it, and to praise it. And, and then we just leave it up to Him. Amen. Amen. 